Yes, nothing is impossible if two kingdoms truly wish to live in harmony. I'm glad that you are so open-minded. That's why you shouldn't object if I ask you to join me in the campaign against Indwangres. You and your men will march against them. Alone, we will see who's the true king of kings. It would appear that Somerset was right, wouldn't it? It all comes down to blowing their heads off. Ah! We're winning! Already the people are thinking that the white creatures deserve the glory for Zwitter's ultimate defeat. Boma! Let me love you, Shaka. Let me help you find love. One could end up getting quite involved with this country and this people. <laughs> <laughs> or dead. Shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, Lord. Amen. May you rest in peace. Because we sure as hell won't. Permission to speak, sir? I think it's about time we all face the facts. We're well, landlocked, sir. Makes a sailor like myself feel lost at sea. Especially at a funeral. Landlocked? Mr. Ogle, we've been over all this before. This land is ours, with a proper concession signed and sealed. Given to us by a man who almost had us all killed, sir. The only concession as I see it is a concession to our graveyard, signed and sealed. Steady on, Mr. Ogle. That's all right, Tim. Now, how do you other men feel? Mr. Kane? Well, fact is, sir, uh, I feel we do need a ship pretty bad. Something to sail us out of here, quick. In case Sharka should start trying to test our skills against. Plenty of trees about here, sir. With a bit of sweat, we can soon knock a ship together of sorts. Gentlemen, you surprise me very much. Do you really think that we alone could build anything worth navigating without assistance? It would take us the remainder of the year. And how do you suppose such work would go unnoticed? No, without Sharker's approval, the thing is out of the question. I wasn't thinking of anything fancy, sir. A couple of logs, a sail. If we make sail at night, Sharker will be none the wiser. Mr. Ogle, there are 400 miles of coastline between here and Port Elizabeth with 30-foot waves and razor-sharp reefs. Now, you are not telling me, as a sailor, Mr. Ogle, that you really think that we could make that journey on a raft? It's worth having a try, sir. It's better than sitting around here waiting for that savage to make his next move. Look, sir, we've got through one battle. Oh. Don't think we'll be so lucky the next time. I think that statement is quite unworthy. 
of one of His Majesty's subjects, Mr. Ogle. We have made excellent progress. Progress? What? Eight men against 20,000? You call that progress? Yes, Mr. Abrams, I do. Any good card player will tell you that the least advisable time to fold is when you call your opponent's bluff. Now, Shark has dared us to do the impossible. To all intents and purposes, we've proved we can. And I would suggest to you all that our position is now stronger than ever. But democracy prevails here. Francis, don't you agree? Certainly. Every man here is entitled to his own point of view. Quite. Zach, Pete, you got anything to say for yourselves? I appeal. Must. Should. Remain independent of Shaka, whatever the problems or risks. Whatever we do, Mr. Farewell, there will be risks. Very good, Mr. Abrams, I understand you. Gentlemen, we will in due course establish the manner and the timing of our departure. Now let us give thought to our dead comrades and to their proper burial. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Farewell, I know, would have been on that raft within a week just to see if it was possible. But not for Banner. You don't really want to go, do you? For Banner Camp Joji may have a greater future than Lieutenant Francis George Farewell ever dreamt of. Don't be ridiculous. I'm being ridiculous, am I? Yeah, well, maybe I am. But then so much of what's happened here is ridiculous, isn't it? You've called not only Shaka's bluff, but the bluff of the past ten millennia of civilization. Life, death, youth, resurrection, friendship. We've even turned the sanctity of Christ into a political device. Shaka is becoming the victim of our sophistry, and so are you! be dressed up to play the part, but we can never be so new. And that has little or nothing to do with the color of our skins. You need that boat more than they do. They may have lost their courage, but you... You're losing yourself. Granted, we're gonna need a good reason for going, right? I mean, a reason he'll believe, and I suggest that he's far too cunning to believe anything but the truth. Well, you came here to make an alliance, didn't you? I mean, at the outset, that was the unvarnished truth of your mission, right? Well, the time has now come for the two sovereigns to seal the pact. We'll escort Shaka's emissaries down to Cape Town, where a proper peace treaty can be drawn up between His Majesty's government and the Zulu Empire. And therein lies our need of a ship. You're making it sound rather easy. Well, it can be easy. If you remember which of those two sovereigns you truly represent. It's not a bad idea at all. Well, a journey over land would be extremely dangerous. As, of course, you know, Nkosi. We think it more practicable to go by sea. 
And uh, how do you plan to cross the waters? We shall build a ship with your help, Nkosi. And who will accompany you? Well, my men, and those that have been elected to speak in your place, your prime minister, even perhaps certain of your chief indunas, to make the embassy credible. Very clever, Febana. And what makes you think I'm so willing to send my emissaries to your kingdom? Did you really think that I would let you go as you came? Returning home with my prime minister and my chief Induna as a proof that your hunt was successful? That was not my intention. Nor is it mine. We'll do as you suggest, Febana, with one minor change. You'll go alone. with him and all the required help. But Mbuyazi and the rest will stay behind. Yes, I see. Hostages? Mm, we could call it that. Though I'd prefer to consider it an indication of your uh, Goodwill. Have you finished, Mbuyazi? Mm. Of course. And Febana! My need for you and your people will be endured until next harvest. If you are not back by then, they shall die. Suspect. Not Lubukasi. Good. So it must remain. If you were to suspect, it could spell death for both of you. You must leave Bulawayo at once. I'll take you to Mgindin. Women there will look after you. For how long must I stay away? Perhaps for as long as he lives. Let's put her in the pond. Asambe. 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 Asambe.
of love. The moon is full and I want it to shine my love down on Shaka. Don't place too much faith in the moon. It comes and goes and is too far away to give you what you want. kind of food. I can't believe that this is going to stay edible all the way to the Cape, even if it is smoked. to enforce discipline amongst your men. That was always your weakness. Old Natal is mine. As agreed, I am its king. You have no right to murder my people. They were never your people. Your people are there, safe and sound. And so they'll remain until next year's harvest. As agreed. Mm -hmm. 
See him again, sir. God only knows. Let's hope we haven't tried his patience too far. Hey, 
Have you found her? Yes, Dr. Bezid. She has been in hiding at the Great Queen's Crawl, my king. So, you have deceived me. Just as you deceived my father. Sure. I have made you queen of queens. The most powerful woman in this land. In the world. But that was not enough for you, mother. You wanted more. I love you, Shaka. Love. Love. We are incapable of that emotion, Mother. All that we felt. All we ever felt is vengeance and hate. Hate. Hate! And I am the product of your hatred. Just as he is the product of my hatred. No. No. He is the future. Through him your name will, will live forever. Tola! No, mother. There can be no future without Shaka. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Yeah, we'll go. In charge is a European, you say? Yes, sir. Some eccentric who calls himself Farewell. Lieutenant, RN. He asked me to give you this report, sir. Farewell? Don't be a damned idiot. Fetch him here at once. Quite a spectacle, farewell. You'll have Cape Town all abuzz with anticipation of what your little circus can do. Can I offer you some rum? You do remember what that is. It's the colonist's greatest weapon, next to Bible hawkers and guns. 
It's all part of the Crown's unofficial policy when extending its boundaries amongst the so-called natives. First it sends in the Bible hawkers to delude their simple hearts and then rum seller captures their stomachs and then and finally the armies take rightful possession. Yes, sir. I remember what it is. I once considered you merely as an idealist. One of the many harmless visionaries who pollute this century. But now I see you are far more dangerous. You're a manipulator. As much of a hypocrite as you say we are. I cannot deny that the Crown's colonial policy is far from unblemished. But who are you to criticize our tactics when your own have been so outrageous? Your report makes interesting reading. Macassar oil, did you say? Indeed. Whose means to an end? So is the rum. None of us are playing by the book. I can see no reason why you should be so righteous. I've done my job, Lord Charles. I've done it well. The Cape has enjoyed three years of grace. We're now standing on the threshold of a lasting peace with the Zulus. Waiting in your cells across that courtyard is a group of proud men. They're waiting for a proper audience with you. Peace is the gift they bring. You treat him like animals. You refuse to meet with them. There may be nothing standing between this colony and 60,000 warriors. Believe me, sir, I've seen them in action. That has the distinct flavor of a threat. And since you are making it in the name of someone who is officially dead, I must assume that you do not represent some self-styled savage chief, but that you yourself are that chief. What do you say? Our reports indicate that Shark had died over two years ago, Lieutenant. Why, well, also I'm officially dead. See, that's a fallacy. No, no, Shark is alive, very much alive, I might add. We have only your word for that, Lieutenant. Are you actually insinuating that I have made myself the king of the Zulus? It wouldn't be the first time. These natives think we were born to lead, and the road from fiction to fact can often be very short. Especially when untold power lies at the end of the journey. Ah. That's preposterous. But in point of fact, it makes no difference. It makes no great difference at all whether you're dealing with Shaka or Fabana Khan, Georgie, because the Zulu's requests remain the same. Permission to have audience with His Majesty's representative. Which side of the fence are you on? That, Lord Charles, I'll leave for you to determine. Good day, gentlemen. I shall await your decision. Do you expect me, as governor of the Cape, to lend an ear to a bunch of savages? Yes, Lord Charles, I do, because that's your job, because you're a governor of the colonies. If you find it hard to speak to savages, well, I suggest you resign. Await your decision.
think we could find somewhere a little more private. Major work. Mrs. Farewell, you, you look wonderful. <laughs> and so do you, Mr. Wilkins. Oh. It seems this Sharker has even the power to turn the most conservative of Englishmen into subjects of the Zulu Empire. Oh, uh, allow me to introduce you to King Sharker's, uh, well, I suppose you'd say Prime Minister and his councillors. Oh. Well, do we, they, do we meet Lord Charles? Um, no, Tim. Uh, no. We'll have to wait. Ungamani. Beba. Major, lead on. Thank you, Major. There's no reason to stay here, you know. I have comfortable lodgings more fitting an emissary of King Shaka. Hmm. No, no. I must stay here. It's a point of principle, I must. I have to stay here with those men until those Idiots. Take us seriously. Well, then let's forget the problems of empires and kings. I've missed you, Francis. I've missed you desperately. in me and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe in me will be condemned. 
he who is not with him is against him. The prophecy of love. The prophecy of hate. Surprisingly alike with me or against me. I'm beginning to realize that Georgie himself has little to do with my embassy to your kingdom. If your people truly believe in Christ, it is with him that I must ultimately negotiate. And I understand him well. We are both tyrants in our own ways. So either your king of kings serves me, or I him. I see no room for compromise. Well, perhaps by serving Christ, you are indeed serving yourself. By being true to him, maybe safeguarding the truth of your own nature. and cozy. Greatly to be preferred. You and your people believe that? Oh, yes, Papa, we do. Then why did you hang it from a tree? There are many things not easily explained. That's why tyrants are necessary, Muyanzi. Bayed, when I was old, in the Vaz, The Queen is not well, Mosi. She has suffered her pains in the death of the child. The great female elephant must suffer the burdens of her deceit, Fula! But Kosi, the witch doctors fear that the great queen is very ill. The matter is closed. The queen needs you, Kosi. We need you, Pussy. The matter is closed. The Queen needs you, Pussy. The great female elephant must suffer the burdens of her deceit, Omar. The matter is closed. Ambuyas. 
Look, will you get him out of here? She can't breathe. She needs air. Uman! Uman! Uman, no one can help him! Say son! Save her, or my guilt will become your own. May it take a miracle, Papa. Search for one in the book. There are many there to choose from. Oh, merciful God, forgive us. Oh, no.